it's not formal. We don't have to do any kind of introduction. Right. It's right. not a formal podcast. It's just a conversation. But right. I do want to ask you before we get started, how was, and we are live now. So hi, everybody. But how, how was, was what? the appointment this morning? It was awesome. I, I have it in your, in uh, Minding Your Soul. I have it in there. Yeah. I, Les took a picture of me after the, yeah, it was great. That's wonderful. And did he say, oh my goodness, you look amazing. He said, he said, um, I love seeing you because you always are doing so well. And I have no recommendations except keep doing what you're doing. That's like a dream appointment. It's it is, you know, and he's just a perfect neurologist. And, you know, I told Matt today that he, I didn't know this, but I looked it up. He has his bachelor's degree is in psychology. So, and then he went to medical school, school after that. So, you know, he, he, he knows about people and the, and that we're people and not just subjects, you know, that says to me is that he cares about the person first and then the medical stuff comes later. Right. Exactly. How did you find him? Was he more than, did you go? To yeah. Um, well, because um, when I lived here before I had a neurologist with Ontario neurology associates and then when I moved away, you know, I had to get a different neurologist. And when I came back to work in this area again, I was going to go back to my same neurologist, but he retired. So um, then I went to Rochester, the MS uh, up there, and um, I had to fire them because they were awful. They were so condescending and mean. So I fired them. And then one of my other doctors um, got me an appointment with uh, this other Dr. Vitacor with Ontario Neurology Associates, and he is in my camp. So, um, and then he left, but Dr. Romanowski was there. And um, so now I have him and he's just perfect. He's just a perfect doctor. It's perfect and he's you. there for me. If I need him, he goes, well, I'll see you in a year unless you need me. So I like, thank you. And he, and he brought up the fact about um, MRIs. And I, he said, I'm totally okay with how we're handling your MS. He said, because you know, you're doing so well. He said, and I know you don't want any MRIs. He said, so let's not do that. I'm like, no, because it's not going to make a difference and how I'm going to treat myself. So that's wonderful. I'm glad we're starting with this now because the, one of the main questions is, is she on medication? No, no medication, no medication. I have never been on medication ever, ever. So Every, as everyone's getting on right now, we have about 15 people. Jump on, say hi, um, tell me where you're from. We're talking to Rhonda Dodson today. Rhonda started the protocol a couple of years ago, and she's going to walk us through when she was diagnosed, the symptoms that she experienced, the progression of those symptoms, and then what she started doing to start healing her body, how it worked, and how the symptoms started to go away. Because it's not magic. And it does take, right, components. The body, the mind, and the soul all have to be addressed. They so do. This is perfect timing because in the group, there are so many people who are new who are saying, do I start with medication? What do I do? So let's start with your story. Wait, before we do that, you know, I'm not, I want to make sure that we're live in the group. And I want to see as people say hello. I see Sarah's on here already. Thank you, Sarah. How are you doing? So as your questions come in, Put them in the comments and I will do my best to get to them. But you guys who have been here for a few years with me know that I get so engrossed in the conversation. I forget to look at the comments. So Rhonda, help me out with that later. But all right. So Rhonda, thank you for being here. And let's get started with when were you diagnosed and how did the whole MS shit show start? Okay. So um, I was diagnosed in 1980s, January of 1986. Um, I had gone to the doctor because I had a problem with my left eye and it ended up being optic neuritis. And so um, at that point, they sent me to a neurologist um, because I was having, you know, some cog fog and, and dizzy kind of feelings and stuff. They were like, okay, go to a neurologist. And uh, the neurologist um, had me have an MRI and they didn't show, it didn't show anything that, that it was anything wrong, but he said, from your symptoms, we're diagnosing you with multiple sclerosis, he said. So at that point, that was 1986, there were no drugs to put anybody on then. There weren't any. And I mean, he could have put me on steroids, but he didn't want to put me on anything. So I have never taken anything. 
1986 there, I had this optic neuritis and I had this cog fog and this fatigue thing. My, my son was on the decline. Um, so my, um, my first son was two years old and my second son was three months old. So that's when I was diagnosed. So I, um, had, it was, it, it was quite traumatic, but, um, I was able to get through it. And at that point it was diagnosed as re, um, re, remitting, re recurring. And so I would have, I would have the symptoms for about three months and then I would go into remission. So it was on and off like that for, you know, years. Uh, the doctor would say, okay, so you're doing great. I'll see you in seven years. So, you know, every seven years, whether I maybe I thought it was going to happen or it actually did. And it did happen every you know few years. I would get get back into a uh, um, relapse. And um, so at that point, um, I just I just had to deal with it, I deal with it, and deal with it. And little by little, I was getting more and more symptoms of the cog fog, the fatigue, the um, I would have stiffness in my muscles and, uh, you know, I would have to try and move around to get out of the stiffness and then I would be so tired and I'd have to go to sleep and that would go on and on and on. I, um, to do I had numbness in my legs um, on and off. It would happen. It would go away, but it was quite disturbing. I used to test myself without looking at my leg. I'm like, can I feel my leg? No, I cannot, you know, so I had to deal with that. So numbness, tingling. Um, I did the same I thing with my kids. My kids, would, I would say, all right, pinch the skin. Yeah. And they'd go, can you feel this? I'm like, did you start yet? Yeah, oh, I know. Mom, this shit hurts. Yeah, I know. Um, my feet, my feet were numb. Like they felt like they were really, really cold, but they weren't really cold. It was just because they were so numb. I would try to put heating pads on them to warm them up, but that wasn't the issue. So that, that was one of my symptoms. Um, of course, my optic neuritis went away, but every once in a while I would get like sort of optic neuritis. It would kind of come back, come and go. Um, I would have terrible anxiety um, because I was nervous about wherever I went, how I was going to feel. You know, some I do. You, as we know, you can be feeling great at one moment and the next minute you'll go someplace. And then, you know, I would I think we talked about the other day that. Um, I vol would volunteer in school and then the teacher would say, okay, we're having a field trip. Would you like to chaperone? And I'm like, okay, you know, so I'm like, great. Now I'm going to go on this field trip on a school bus with, you know, 30 second graders. And what happens if I get this oh, feeling, you know, you and so, There's no yeah, so that kind of thing um, could give me into a little anxiety and I would just have to like calm down, you know. Um, and talk yourself out of it. And talk myself out of it. Um, and, and I want to go back a little bit. Even though I was diagnosed in 1986, um, I know that I had these symptoms on and off since I was 12 years old. Um, all the way through when I was in middle school and high school, it would come and go and come and go. And I'd be tired and all that kind of stuff. And I would have all these other symptoms. And I don't know if anybody else has experienced these, but I had to really think about it because it was such a long time ago. I would have feelings like an out of body of feeling like I'm here, but everybody else is in like another bubble than me or something. And um, I would have to overcome that feeling. And that was a little scary. Um, sometimes things I would have visual problems where everything would look like it was far, far away. So everything looked like it was really tiny. And I, and then after about, I don't know, like 10 minutes, something, it'll all get, they all get big again. So I had some visual disturbances. Those were little clues, but who knew? Nobody knew what was wrong with me. My parents would take me to the doctor and they would say, there's nothing wrong with her. I'm like, well, you know what? There is something wrong with me, but and they couldn't figure, the internet, couldn't right? figure it out. We so, couldn't ask other people on the internet and say, hey, is anyone else experiencing this? We were right. completely by ourselves at 12, 13 years old. Right. And it, 12 years old, there was no internet, you know, that, and I'm, I'm 65. So that was a long, long time ago when there wasn't anything. If you wanted to look something up, you had to go to the library and there wasn't anything to, to find. I didn't know what I had. Or reference your Encyclopedia Britannica yeah. that your mother bought from the salesman in yeah. the living room. Right? We had those. 
Yeah, encyclopedia. The encyclopedia was my job to dust um, once a month. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Did you have the big brown books? Mine was brown. I'll always remember. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yep. So you know, I, I lived a normal life, but it was I had a lot of trouble that nobody else seemed to have, and nobody could say what was wrong. So this was that. So I I, I digress. Um, no, I, I had sensory that. issues. Things would bother me, like sounds or, or thoughts, like if somebody would do something with styrofoam and I would hear this, I'm like, oh, can't th I can't stand it. So that was one of my symptoms. That that has subsided. I don't really have that problem anymore. Um, let's see, balance issues. That's in the last 10, 15 years where I would, you know, get awful dizzy or off balance. Um, let's see. Uh, things far away. Notes. We, yeah, we, um, I told her about the questions that were coming in um, off of Facebook, and the private clients are like, "Please make sure you ask her this and make sure this." And so when I talked to Rhonda, she's like, "I'm taking notes because she's very much like us, where she says, I don't live in the past. I don't think about that all the time.'" No, and I did, and I've forgotten about a lot of my symptoms. And I said to my husband yesterday, "I'm like, you know what? Janine wants me to talk about my symptoms. I better really have to think about it because." Um, I, since I've been doing the starve, kill, detox protocol and exercising and doing my mindset, all of my symptoms, except for the mobility issue, which I'm working on, are gone. Can you say that again? How exciting is that to say? All of my symptoms are gone. And all of my symptoms are gone. Right. They're, except, except by walking, which... I can do, it's just, I'm working on it. You know, the neurologist this morning was pretty impressed with me. Um, because let's give people a comparison. Before starting all of this, what was it like walking down the hallway? Um, it, hanging onto the wall, hanging onto the wall always. And I don't do that anymore. Um, when I walk down the hallway, I don't really have a problem walk, you know, not touching the walls. Um, when, but, but I know the hot walls are there in case I need them. So my challenge and I, and I work on it all the time is walking places where there aren't walls. And, um, so I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Um, and isn't that crazy how powerful the mind is? It is, you know, and we talked about this before, um, before I started doing the starve, kill, detox protocol and getting into my mindset and exercising the proper way I had to talk to my boss at work um, and this would have been in, in during the pandemic time you know I said you know I'm having a lot of trouble with my multiple sclerosis and my neurologist said that I can either work from home or I'm going to have to resign because I, I just can't I just can't and this is the reason I couldn't drive. Driving was so scary because I would be so, I would have a cog fog. I'd be so tired. I would have to pull off the side of the road and close my eyes for 10 minutes in order to have enough energy to drive back home. And that was very um, irresponsible of me to try and be on the roads with a car. Other people, I could have gotten in accidents. I could have killed people, you know, or myself or both. So I did not drive my car. I worked from home. I did not drive my car for a whole year um, because I did not feel well enough to do that. When I started with the Starve, Kill, Detox um, protocol, it was pretty amazing. Probably within a few weeks, I was making my celery juice and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have any cog fog. I don't feel like I have to go take a nap after. What is going on? It was the answer. Um, now, I had to make sure that I stayed with the protocol. I needed to make sure that the mindset was there for me to say, this is working. Stick with it. Don't get discouraged because I would get discouraged because then one day I'd be like, oh, I'm tired again. Oh, no, here I go again. And then I'm like, no. So... I think we, we, you had asked me a question about what, what was the, um, what did you do to 
stay in stay the in control or focus healing yes because when we healing doesn't just happen and then it stays there no i talk about the peaks and the valleys all the time right, right. it is up and down yep. those peaks keep getting higher until you reach a threshold where there are no more symptoms but you're still going to go into these valleys and in the beginning of the healing journey when you go into the valley it feels like an exacerbation and because we're used to what exacerbations feel like and we know what they lead to, we mm -hmm. go right into fear. Oh no, this is it. Right. My, 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 my mind used to say, well, I hope you enjoyed it because it's over now. This is how you're going to feel like for the rest of your life. And it was so strong and overwhelming and so sad that I didn't know right away how to get out of that. And that's why I teach it today. You have to understand what healing feels like. And this is why Rhonda and I and so many people do this so that you know what a valley feels like, what healing feels like. So go ahead. Right. It feels so, like an exacerbation. And then what do you do in your mind? It does feel like an exacerbation. And um, so when I was in your, it started with your group and you had Matt Rowe as one of your guests, I think it was on Thursdays that you had him on. And he had um, invited anybody that wanted to, to have a call with him about his Thrive program, his mindset um, protocol or whatever. And so I did have a call with him and I was, I was kind of like, yeah, well, I don't know about this mindset thing. You know, I know that this is working for me. And so after talking with him, I thought, you know what, I, I really believe that this is going to be another another piece to my puzzle because I was exercising and I was doing the star kill detox thing. So I started with thrive with uh, Matt and it was a game changer. And I fall back on my mindset on a daily basis. Um, when something doesn't seem like right to right, I used to be able to, I used to just get all freaked out. Like, like you said, Oh no, here we go again. And then it would, and then it would manifest into a horrible thing because it would actually happen, and it would be like a couple days before I'd feel better. I'm really trying to dial back to remember how that used to be, but it did work that way. Now let me just tell you something about last night. Yesterday I was working around, like cleaning like a maniac, exercising and all that kind of stuff, and then I went to bed and I got in bed and my left foot was doing some weird thing. It was like it felt stiff and it kind of had a little cramp in it and I didn't know what I'm like, Oh no. And then I said, you know what? Put that right in the background. Forget about whatever's going on to your foot because you are going to the neurologist in the morning. And this morning I had a neurologist appointment eight at eight o'clock. And I knew that I just wasn't going to let that foot thing bother me. I got up to go to the bathroom. I'm like, yeah, it still feels weird. This morning I got up. I didn't even think about it. I got in the shower and I'm taking a shower and I go, oh, I forgot about that foot thing. Guess what? It went away. It's gone. Yes. It went away and it, and it hasn't come back. And so if I had kept dwelling on that foot thing, it probably would still be there. And it would have gotten in the way of my positive mindset for going to see the neurologist this morning, which I was totally excited about doing. And anybody that's watching this has already seen, I put on a couple of groups, what happened with me this morning with my neurologist. It was an excellent, I go there once a year and I walked right in there and he called us, me in and um, he said, so how are you feeling? I'm like, great. I said, I think I told you last year, my symptoms are all gone except for my mobility problems, which... I'm working on. He goes, yep, you are. You're doing a great job. He said, I don't know what you're doing. He said, but keep on doing it. He said, I don't have any, any recommendations for you. He said, I'm just very, very pleased with you. So that was all I needed to hear. And it's like, okay, now my energy level is really skyrocketed. What a day. You started off with the neurologist. You're here reminding your soul, telling everybody about your success. Yep. Yep. And I'm so happy to share what's going on with me because it is quite um, exciting and it is quite, um, I don't want to call it amazing. Well, it is amazing. 
but the more I do it, the less um, amazing it seems and the more normal it seems. And I think, you know what? I am healing. And I feel a little bit, um, I don't want to call it angry because I don't want to be an angry person, but I really, really wish that I had known about all this stuff over these past 38, 40 years. So I could have done this before, before now, but I'm glad that I I'm doing it now. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter that it didn't happen before. It just matters to me that it's happening now. And then I can share what, what is actually a positive thing in my world. I love um, that you say this. And guys, yesterday we were talking a little bit. And when she was telling me how amazing she's doing, I said, doesn't it piss you off? Doesn't it piss you off? that all this information, like all we needed to do were a few things. No one told us that we could heal. So it wasn't even an option for us. No one said we need to bring the body back into balance. We need to release the toxins, whether they're mental toxins or they're physical toxins. We need to get them out of the body. Your body is responding to a virus. No one said any of these things. All they said was you have a disease and it's incurable and you're going to end up in a wheelchair. Right. And if if you're like me, and I, I think right around the same time, my first experience with MS was watching Annette Funicello decline. Yes. Years too, right? Yes. Annette Funicello is from Utica, New York, and I'm from Rome, which is the city right next to Utica. And so, yes, that is the first thing I thought of when I was told that I had um, multiple sclerosis. I'm like, oh, boy. Well, that's the end of me. Yeah, you know, a, but. Death sentence. Yeah, a death sentence. And it could have been, but I think that mindset, my mindset was like, hell no, that's not going to happen to me. I have too much to do. And, um, you know, I had two small children and then I had a third. Um, I had too much to live for. And I somehow I was able to get myself from 1986 to 2021 and then in 2021 i started healing my symptoms so i made it and if i can do it anybody can anybody in 2021 that's that's oh. that's when i started with your program and I, I as you're saying this and you're saying the years i remember thinking during covid 2020 and Kevin and I wanting to have a baby, at, you know, start trying at 44. And I thought, I need to start this business. I need to get this information out. And I said, how am I going to do that? How am I going to have a baby at this age? I have two grown children, not grown, they're 15. And, you yeah, know, they're, yeah. Yeah, right. Like they're, they're always going to be there. And I said, I need to do this. I need to start this business. And there was a huge part of me that said, you know, what if you fail? What if it doesn't work? And just listening to you go, I wish I would have had this information sooner. Yeah. I wish I would have done this sooner. And I hope that as people are watching this and they're beginning to heal, and for you as well, I hope you continue to use any platform available to you, just like you are right now, right. to spread this information that, yep. the, that the suffering that people are going through with multiple sclerosis is completely unnecessary. Yeah. You don't have to suffer. There is a way out. You do have options. It's not a death sentence. Right. Because the number one question is, am I too far gone? Do you think I can still heal? What would you say to them? I would say absolutely not. I mean, I'm, I'm retired. I'm 65 years old. If I thought it was too late for me to heal, I wouldn't have healed. If I, if I, if I had just given up and said, well, I'm too old, then this wouldn't have happened. Um, the mindset, you you know, it's your life and um, you're worth it. You're worth every minute of it. Um, when I talked to the neurologist this morning, I told him about the old uh, celery juice and lemon water and detoxing out, you know, of the, the toxins and stuff. And he, he was writing it down and he said, celery he juice. <laughs> he was taking notes and he goes, celery juice. What do you buy it in a store? I said, no, well, you could. I said, but you need to make fresh gel celery juice. I said, my husband gets it from Costco. I said, I make it fresh every single day. 
I said, and this is, was my ticket to get rid of my symptoms from the get go. I started drinking celery juice and after a couple of weeks, cog fog, fatigue, um, all of that stuff just disappeared. Um, and he and was that's just why when people, and he started taking notes, he's writing down celery juice. Okay. Lemon water. Okay. When do you yep. take that? It is unbelievable because there are people who are watching this interview right now and are, who are re-traumatized every time they go to the neurologist. I'm speaking from my own experience and from listening to so many people, they're re-traumatized because they're told, well, this is MS. There's nothing yep. we can do for you. And you're sitting there going, there's got to be something. I can't live like this. Right. And they just go, well, you know, this is MS. I told you this, this is how it goes. Now, when you talk about mindset, there are people out there going, how can you say that mindset helps you heal when there's something physically wrong with my body? And my answer to that is, if you find what's working for you, you need to stick with it. And my, uh, my idea of mindset is that go back to what is actually working and get your mind around it that you have to stick with it. You have to believe that it's have he, it's working and then keep your mind on it. Like my thing with my foot last night, you know, I know that I'm, I know that I don't have those symptoms anymore. I know I don't have the numbness and stuff like that. And I, and I know why. So I didn't dwell on it. I put it in the back of my mind. I went to sleep and it went away because I willed it to go away. I willed it to not be part of me. And it works. It works because I believe it. And I, and I, I will not ever go back to what was me. Okay. This is happening to me. I'm just going to have to accept it because I'm not going to. Um, I, I know that I, I know that I, I feel like a million bucks compared to what I felt like five years ago. Talk about the energy. Talk about the difference in the energy. The energy. I, I have so much energy. Um, okay. So I retired in, um, September of 2022. Since then I have painted every single room in this house myself. Um, that takes a lot of energy. People are like, well, you can't paint. You can't walk well. Oh yeah. I can climb a ladder and that takes a lot of energy, but I did it. Nice. I did every single room in this house. We got to be at Christmas time of 2022, you know, and my husband said, do you think you could wait till after the holidays to start painting another room? And I said, Oh, if you insist. So as soon as the holidays get over with, I continued on, you know, the hallway, the bathroom. Um, and then in the summer I painted the front deck and I painted the back deck. So I have a ton of energy and I would never have had this much energy before 2021 when I started doing this. never, ever, ever, because this is what would happen to me. I would do something like wash the dishes and then I'd come in here and take a nap because I was so tired and that never happens now. I can stay up and um, exercise and read a book. I used to fall asleep reading books because I was so tired. The energy level is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, I say that same when people say, well, what, what was the energy like before and what is it like now? Even as a kid, I didn't have energy. Nope. My friends were going out for sports and running. And then in my 18, 19, when I met my husband, my sister, well, he was 21 when I met him. I was 17. And so my sister-in-law, his sister was... 17. I, I think she wasn't even driving yet. So maybe 16. She said one day, she goes, you know, I was so bored today. I just, I just went out for a run. I just had to go out and, and run. She's like, I just came back. I got three miles in. And right away I thought, is she saying that just to be mean? Like, I know. I, can't I, be know. Sure. I know. Who feels like going for a run? Who has that kind of energy? I, I, I never knew that kind of energy. Right. And now you do know it. And now you can go out for a run. And um, yeah, you know, I, I hopefully I can run sometime. I mean, I'll, I, I was never a runner before, so I don't expect myself to be a marathon runner now. 
but I was a walk, I was a walker, you know, you know, I was able to walk, you know, miles. So that's coming next. That's oh, coming next. Funny, Rhonda, because I was never a runner either. I was never drawn to it. And now that I can run, I do run. And there is never a time where I'm running, where I'm not thinking I'm running. Oh my God, I'm running. It I never know. gets old. It never right. gets old. So stay tuned. I'm going to be a runner too. <laughs> You're going to add to the list of uh, testimonials on mindingyoursoul.com. Right. There was a trend um, that started, I think, about last year when people began to heal. They started running and making videos. So, of course, those are all on the mindingyoursoul.com uh, right. testimonial page. And you're going to be adding to that. Your your video is going to be next because yeah, I'm, I'm all ready. of the symptoms that you've had since 1986. And I feel like if you just Googled MS symptoms and just scrolled, those are all the ones that you had. And I had them all. I had them all. Right. Yep. yep. I now, didn't know I, I didn't know what they were, but now they know about multiple sclerosis. Yeah, of it, these are all the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And these are all the things I dealt with my whole my whole life. And then um, yeah, so it's a huge thing. Um and now they're gone. The, they're gone. They're the gone. Walking is even getting good. And that's what I wanted to say about the mindset. You can walk down the hallway and have the security of the walls being there. Do you use the walls? No. Right. But the security is there. Yeah. That's why going outside where there's no walls, the fear comes in. And yeah. that's what stuck with me for a while. That fear of the what if, what if. Right. So that's why walking down the hallway is easy to do because what if, okay, well, what if I can't? That's all right. The walls are right here. Right. You don't get that security in right. uh, outside. Yeah. So I, I think that I need to overcome that fear and I, and I will, and I am come overcoming it. Here's another example. Um, on Thursday mornings, I um, go and visit my friends and I gather um, at a place on the lake and I drive there and I look at the lake. It's a huge lake. When I see white caps on the water, I'm like, oh, great. That means there's a lot of wind. When I get there, it's going to be hard for me to walk. And I'll get out of my car and I'm like, okay, it's just wind. Don't, don't worry about it. It's just wind. And, uh, and I'll get out of my car and I'll start walking on the sidewalk. I'm like, okay, it's just wind. And I make it. I can do it. But yeah. Yeah, you know, I love that you explain that. Okay, it comes in. I get scared, and I go relax. It's just wind. I will be fine. Mm -hmm. What happens when you take the other path and you go? Oh no, I see the white caps. It's that means it's windy. I can't do this. I can't walk in the wind. It's going right. to knock me over. And then you start spiraling down, and then you don't get out of the car. Right. And and the thing is, if I Turned, if I saw the white caps and thought it's too windy for me to get out of my car and walk into where my friends are, and I said, well, I'm just going to turn around and go home, I'll never go back there. So every time I see something like that, I'm like, no, nope, you're going, you're going. And I, it's just, it gives me more confidence. And, and speaking of confidence, I think that the confidence and the consistency in what I do compared to what I used to do is such a big thing. So I'm consistent with the eating that I do. I don't stray from it at all. Never, you know, the um, gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, artificial sweeteners, all that kind of stuff. I just don't do it. I can consistent. I'm consistent with my exercise program programs. So I um, make sure that I stick with it. And then of course that all important mindset um, I'm consistent. Let's, let's talk about the consistency because I hear a lot about not wanting to go gluten free from so many people. I don't want to go gluten free. That's going to be really hard to do. When did you go gluten free? And what was that like for you? I went gluten free right when I started with the, uh, with your minding your soul program. We, we started out with the lemon water. And then after that, I did celery juice and then, but Right in the right to get from the get go, we went. You told us no gluten, no dairy, no eggs. I did it right away. Right away. I didn't. I didn't ease into it. 
I just said, you know what? Then I read the medical medium cleansing to heal thing, cleanse to heal book. And I'm like, well, he's got all kinds of, you know, testimonials to that. This is happening because of the Epstein-Barr virus. Why wouldn't I just follow that? And um, I did it. And I'll tell you what, Janine, nothing tastes as good as uh, as something else. Nothing tastes as good as feeling well feels. Right. You know, I don't have any desire to eat anything that is going to make me go back to the way I used to feel. Right. Um, and, you know, I know that there could be some mistakes that you make or you know, accidentally glutenize yourself and stuff like that. One time I um, went out to breakfast at a diner and I'm like, well, I can have potatoes. So I'll just have fried potatoes and that'll be fine. Well, about an hour, maybe in less than an hour after that, I'm all of a sudden I'm like, what did I do? But the oil that they must have fried those potatoes in must have been cross contaminated with something that had gluten in it because that was the only thing that it could have been. So I'm just very careful now. You learn, but you learn and you're going to accidentally glutenize yourself. Yep. I still do it today. So uh, Julie's 17. So uh, it's been 15 years since I went gluten free. Right. And people say, well, are you ever going to eat gluten again? And I say the same thing you say. I go, God, no, because I, first of all, I'm not going to risk it. Um, and this feels amazing. I don't care what they said I couldn't eat because you're absolutely right. Nothing feels as good as healthy. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Right. Is, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Nothing tastes as good as energy feels, as no brain um, cog fog feels. Yep. It is amazing on the other side of MS, on the side of healing, it is amazing what this and feels you, like. And you can't go back. No, you can't. And, and I'm not going to go back because now that I, um, I have all my energy and I don't have any um, cog fog and all that kind of stuff, I mean, when I couldn't drive my car, I told my husband getting towards the end of, you know, before I was able to drive again, I'm like, I want to drive my car. It's sitting in the garage. It's driving me crazy that I have to ask you to take me to the store. I have to ask you to get me something from the store. You know, I can't go and visit my parents because I can't drive myself, you know, and I'm like, that's it. So once I started feeling better after doing this um, protocol in my mindset and stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm taking my car and I'm going to drive around. And it was scary, but I, I did it. And I went over to the next city and then I'm like, okay, now I can go home. And I came by our house. I'm right by my house. Nope. I'm still going to drive. I drove for like an hour and then I'm like, now I'm going to the gas station and I'm going to pump my own gas. And so those are things I didn't do for a whole year. And that's a long time. Oh, that's a long how time. long was it from the time you started the protocol, which I wrote that down. What month was it in 2020? September. September. It was September. Yeah. So it was probably, I probably, I know I stopped driving probably in, oh, say December of the previous year. I, I got in my car for the first time to drive in april of 2022 and that's when i actually felt well enough um and after i did that first little little spin around with my car um i got in the car another time in april and went to lowe's and bought 200 dollars worth of plants for my for my deck all by myself and uh, this one lady saw me kind of like you know walking with the the cart and she goes can I help you? I'm like, no, thank you. I can do this all by myself. But you know, thanks. But and um, first I thought, well, maybe I should have her help me. No, nope, I can do it myself. And I drove home and I didn't and I used to get um um panicky when I get like to stoplights because I wasn't in motion. That's the other thing. If I wasn't moving, sometimes I would be like get kind of dizzy or cog foggy or something at the traffic lights and I got to the traffic light and I'm like am I actually sitting here with no problem waiting for the light to change and I was like and 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 now I don't even think about obviously it's now it's a couple of years how long has it been 2021 22 23 almost 
three years, I just get in the car and I go wherever I want to. Without even thinking about it. Without even so thinking about it. From starting the protocol, it was eight months. Yep. Eight months before yep. you could drive. Mm -hmm. So when anyone is looking at all of the changes that need to happen in their life in order to implement this protocol, the advice that I give is you have to evolve into the protocol. You mm -hmm. can't just say, okay, this Saturday, I'm going to start the protocol. I'm going to do the lemon water, the celery juice, the heavy metal. I'm going to go gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free. And I'm going to start on Saturday. My advice is always the slower you go, the mm -hmm. faster you will heal. Mm -hmm. You yep. start one component at a time. You see how that affects you. You get used to that. You, it's incorporated into your schedule and you go, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to do the celery juice. Because yep. I bet there were times where you had to take breaks from oh, the celery. I did. I did take breaks um, it, because it. Uh, I, I think it was, I would, I don't know how I would feel, but I would feel a little um, tired again. And I'm like, jeepers, I wasn't tired last week, but I think it was because I was just overloading myself too much and I wasn't getting used to it enough. And um, and now I, I just love drinking celery juice um, and I do drink it almost every day. I don't drink a lot on the days that I have to travel someplace because I'm afraid I'm going to have to use the bathroom too much. Right. But, um, but you know, that's only, uh, you know, once every couple of weeks that I don't do and it. I, but. Still, I still do the same thing because I had to take my son to the airport. It was an hour and a half away, drop him yeah. off and then drive back in three hours. I'm like, I, I'm not doing this. No, there's right. no way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not because there's anything wrong. I just don't want to have to pee. Right. Or or when we go down to visit my son that lives near Philadelphia, that's a five hour drive, you know, and um, if you drink too much, there are not enough bathrooms to stop at in Pennsylvania. So, you know, I, I don't drink that much. I drink when I get there where there's bathrooms. But, yeah, you have to be a wise about it. I don't plus think you it's gonna any... turn your five hour trip into a seven hour trip because you stopped every 45. I know, I know it. <laughs> Speaking of driving, um, the last time, no, the time before last, when we went down to visit him, I said to Les, uh, my husband, I said, you know, this is my car. You can drive my car home. And he would always be like, well, it's too far for you. And the highways. And he, so then he just said, all right. Get in the driver's seat. So I drove all the way home, all by my lonesome. Well, no, he was in the car, but I drove the whole way. Five so hours. Five hours. Like it the, was nothing. But like it was nothing. The girl who couldn't drive her car before. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, Minding Your Soul and Janine Troutman. Oh, Rhonda, thank, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, this is about you. We're not, no, no, thank you. Thank you for saying yeah, yeah. that. Thank you for and, saying I, that. and I don't want to leave out Matt Rowe because he's my mindset guru. Yes, you have to. And yeah. that's why the program had to include the mindset component because I finally learned, and this has been an evolution for me too. I didn't know what I did to heal until a medical medium came out and I did his protocol and then all the rest of my symptoms went away. How did I heal leading up to the medical medium? And learning the tools that I learned from Matt, mm -hmm. that's how I was able to look back in hindsight and go, oh, that's what I did. That's why it worked. And that's where I went wrong right. when I would go into the valleys and stay there. And I thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. If anybody wants to speak with me about what I've been through or that I can help you, please reach out to me. Because you can't stay quiet and you will help anybody that is willing to right. listen. Because the, once you know that all of your like 40 years of suffering was unnecessary, then right. you want to prevent other people from ever having to go anything, any, anywhere near that. Go through any of that. Right. Yes, I agree. I got a little noisy here, so I couldn't hear the last part. <laughs> but the delivery person came with dinner, but. That's funny because I was wondering if you guys could hear the two-year-old screaming in the back. <laughs> because when I moved into this, this is the I'm out of my bedroom and into the sunroom. This now is right. my office, but the door is glass so he can see me. So he walks by and starts screaming. I'm like, I'm trying to be professional here, and I have a screen. <laughs> well, I I have to hand it to you though because I it's been a long time since I've had a two-year-old and. I do remember what it was like, but I don't think I would have been able to do what you're doing when I had my two-year-old. I 
I really, oh, well, you did, but you did. We're going through potty training. Right. Right. I used to, I, yeah, I used to go on. Yeah. I used to volunteer and um, yeah, I did a lot of stuff when those kids were little. I realized the other day, cause he's, he's going to be two in March. And I realized I got diagnosed when Christopher was two. I got, was paralyzed in my arms and my legs when Julie was two. And now Jackson is two. And I'm enjoying this so much. Well, as much as one can when, you know, he's sick and he's screaming and the fever and you're up all night. But I'm enjoying this so much. And I'm realizing all the things that I missed because I was in survival mode or I just got the death sentence. And my my kids, my older kids, Christopher, who's 21 and Julie, who's 17 now, they go, Mom, when did I talk? When did I take my first steps? What was my first word? And I don't have an answer for them. I don't know. I don't have baby books. I don't have memory of that. I have memory of trying to get to them when I couldn't use my legs. I have memories of laying in the bed, listening to them play with my husband in the other room, and I couldn't play with them. I have all the bad memories, and I wish I would have been more present. I don't know how you could be, though, when you're in that state and you're so sick. I wish I could have been more present. So I think that's why Jackson was given to me now at 40, now 46 years old, because I get to go through it all again and I get to really appreciate it through right. different eyes. Right. But you know what, Janine? You did the best that you could with what you were handed. And um, the, the your kids survived because you had a, a, a positive vision on what you wanted. And that's why... Christopher and Julie are 17 and 21 because of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. And right. remember when you were saying about even, let's say, your foot this morning, we're like, I'm not going to even entertain those thoughts. Whatever my foot is doing, it can do that. I'm going to go to sleep and wake up and have a great day tomorrow. Right? Yep. You are consciously and intentionally putting your thoughts in this direction when they want to go down the negative path, you are yeah. intentionally putting them this way. And I'm realizing that through my healing, it was my kids that I had to pretend I was okay and just tell my body, you better get this goddamn signal through because we need to walk and we need to make it through. And I don't want them to know how sick I am. And I like would force myself. And now that I've learned that, yes, it was great. But through you and through teaching other people, we're all realizing that you can do that with love. You can do that with ease. You can take these negative thoughts and validate them and say, yeah, this is scary and that's okay, but we're going to get through it. It's not going to last and you are going to heal. Right. Exactly. You have to put those negative thoughts right out by the curb because it's not going to do any good to, to dwell on those negative thoughts. Um, is it always easy? No, it's not easy. Nothing is easy. That's but. what I wanted to say before. When you said you're worth it, do it because you're worth it. That it, I put quotation marks around that, is doing the work that you need to do in order to get your mind away from the negative. I'm not saying don't acknowledge the negative. Acknowledge it. Validate it just like you would a friend who's coming to you and saying, Rhonda, I'm having such a hard day. This is so hard for me to do. I'm trying to stay positive. You wouldn't say to her, what's wrong with you? Just think positive. You'd say, I understand why you're feeling yeah. this way. Right. It's totally justified. Let's see how we can steer this off, though. Let's look at what you do have and what mm -hmm. we can do. Right. Because, I mean, obviously, and it's only been three years and I've been able to do that or, or you know, actually get good at this, getting rid of negative thoughts, things. There were, uh, how old am I, 65? A lot of years that I had negative thoughts that I didn't put to the side and it did affect me. You um, did surrender to them. Just you know, like because we're all human. We're not like super, super robots or something, you know, that know not to do this because that's not going to be good for you or whatever um we're people and we're human so, and so be kind to yourself be kind to yourself be empathetic with yourself because we're we're here for ourselves we're here for each other but you have to take care of number one 
we're one world, so you're not going to be able to take care of anybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Before we end this, I want to go through the comments because I didn't. I want to get to um, your questions. And if we don't get to your questions, we're, they're still in the comments. So I will make sure that either Rhonda or I will address these comments. And if anybody wants to continue the conversation, Rhonda's been so gracious. Reach out to her. You can do it in Minding Your Soul. You can send her a message. You can book a consultation with me on MindingYourSoul.com. The consultations are free. Let's continue the conversation and how it applies to you and your healing and get you started. Because like Rhonda says, it's worth it. You are worth it. All right, here's a, a good question. Do you ladies still cook meals for the family even though you're not eating it? Do you make something that just you can have? So, okay, Rhonda, do you cook separately for you, gluten-free, dairy-free? Yes, I cook, I, cook, um, I cook for myself. Um, and if it's something that I think that my family would enjoy, they you know, it's there, but I do make sure that I make food for my, it's just my husband and I, my son is here sometimes, not very often though. So it's basically just my husband and I, but I do make him his own food. It, that's something he's eating pizza right now, real pizza, because really? I bought a real pizza, but no, I, um, I try to make a meal that, um, that he, he and I can both enjoy, but I do prepare something that's not, um, that has gluten and stuff in there that he can have because, you know, he does not you because, need to eat that way. Yeah. That's why Rhonda is still married. Um, <laughs> I'm currently separated because I'm like, no, this is what we're eating. This is what I'm eating. And if you're hungry and would like to eat, here you go. You can have some. <laughs> I have to, I have to brag though. He is very, very um, compliant and he's very um, yeah. gracious about what I do. And, you know, so. Yeah, I do have to give you. my husband some. Uh, I do have to give him a lot of credit because he actually likes the gluten-free pizza better than his regular pizza. Uh -huh. I think because he feels better after eating it. I still can't agree with him that it tastes better. <laughs> I haven't had a gluten-full pizza in 15 years, but my God, I remember them being good. So, yeah. but when I was a single parent raising little kids on a gluten-free, egg-free, dairy-free diet for myself. The only reason why I made something separate for them was because it was cheaper. So I would make sure that I had the food that I needed to eat. And then I would give them, unfortunately, a box of macaroni and cheese with some vegetables because it was cheap. And the only thing that I had, I didn't have any money and I knew I had to heal myself and I knew food was going to do it. So I allowed them to eat the gluten and the dairy. But today my daughter eats the way I do. She sees what I've gone through. She sees the health. She sees me aging in reverse, just like Rhonda is. We were talking about this last night. We're aging in reverse. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to do it. And, and she eats like me. So really, you just kind of have to, in your right. own family, to answer that question, like, do what you want to do. Do you want to cook separately for your family? Then do it. Right. Well, do you know what? The way, the way we eat is very, very healthy. Right. It's regardless of, you know, fighting off the Epstein-Barr virus, it's a, it's a healthy way to eat. So, yeah, I made a peanut butter cheesecake for Christmas this year. Everyone was like, oh, my God, this is so good. It was gluten free, dairy free and egg free. The recipe is in Minding Your Soul. I think it's in the files. It was amazing. And nobody <laughs> understands that you can eat gluten free, dairy free and egg free and you can still eat deliciously and enjoy your food. It Absolutely. just takes some practice. So and, and yeah, it's, it is expensive. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, gets, mm, it, mm, it can be, especially these days. All right. So let me see if there's anything else. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, it's nice to hear from someone um, with spasticity and stiffness. I'm trying to find the protocol that is being talked about. Where can I find it? Go um, in the events, in the events tab and watch the videos. It's not written down anywhere. And I'm, I'm getting to that. If you want to buy the protocol instructions, you can do that on mindingyoursoul.com. Or you can watch the videos in order. They, I've done workshops before. They're on the Minding Your Soul YouTube channel. It's not something that you can just write down. It's not a one-page thing. Like Rhonda said, you evolve into the steps. And the evolution does require a, a good knowledge of what the peaks and valleys feel like so that you don't give up and you keep going. But reach out to me, do a consultation with me, and I will walk you through the whole thing and see if it's for you. Okay, that I love. Janine Badger should be known as Janine Badass. Um, was that Quinn? I can't see who it was because we're on StreamYard. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, 
All right, we're going to go. There's a lot of comments on here, and I'm so sorry we didn't get to all of them. So what I'm going to do is we'll go back into the comments and we'll answer them um, in the coming days because it's going to take us a little while. And hopefully, Ronza, the last time we did an interview was exactly a year ago. It was January 2023. Yep. <laughs> so, Isn't that wild? Yeah, and we didn't plan it that way either. No, no, no. It's, it's just happened that way. I mean, I just think that um, I don't even know why why we – I think we just talked about um, that I was doing so much better and that you're like, I, oh, I, I can't it remember now. It was on the live at five because it was in my mind, you're um, on the live at fives and you're just commenting and helping other people in minding your soul when they have questions in their posts, mm -hmm. you're always giving them such great advice. And it's been on my mind to say, Hey, listen, right, right. I'm going to do another interview. And I never got the chance to reach out. So right. I'm doing a live at five, I think just a couple of weeks ago, Rhonda says something in the comments and right there. And I'm like, all right, well, this is my opportunity. Rhonda, can you do a live at five with me? That's Are right. You That's right. Yeah. Are you typed in, you're like, yes, of course. Absolutely. Just tell me when. So you know what? Maybe we should just make it a thing. We get together once a year and give an update. Yep. I, yep. I do it again. I love that. So I was preparing a little bit as I was doing the dishes last night, I put on our old interview from a year ago and we started off the interview talking about hair and dyeing it and you said you use coffee to dye your hair well guess what i did i took a break from the dishes i brewed coffee i let it cool i stuck it in my hair put the turban in continued the dishes and it took out all of those like brassiness of those highlights that i'm trying to grow out mm -hmm. it really does work you still do it i do i do so, yeah. all right, guys, you didn't, uh, you were obviously evolved into this lifestyle. You didn't just wake up. No, I, I evolved into it because I, you know, little by little, I was getting rid of like the toxin kind of, you know, my makeup, my body wash and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, all my eye makeup. Um, but yeah, I, I just try really hard not to put any toxins on my skin or in my hair. Um, funny story though. If you cannot tolerate caffeine, make sure you don't use caffeinated coffee on your hair because I did. And, and I was like, what is going on with me? I'm so busy. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, I used less of coffee on my head. <laughs> it went right through my skin. So, But, I mean, lots of people drink caffeine, so that's not a problem. I don't. I only drink herbal tea, so... Ronzo. Whatever you, it just goes to show you whatever you put on yourself is going into your skin. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard because last night Julie goes, what are you on? I go, what? What do you mean? And she's like, it's like you're a million miles an hour. What's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe the coffee's going through my scalp, but I feel it. And she's like, my coffee doesn't work that way. I'm like, if, I don't know. It does. I bet that I can't wait until I download this and go, Julie, come here. You have to watch this. I totally felt it last night. So guys take that into account. If you're going to use coffee to dye your hair, make sure it's decaf. <laughs> I yeah. was up till two o'clock in the morning yesterday. Yep. I, could, I That's, that's great to know. Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> we're just going to have to tell people that. All right. Rhonda, you yes. had a long day today. You had your neurologist appointment at eight o'clock this morning. Here it is six o'clock and we're still doing this. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm this just really, really thrilled to do this. I feel honored. Oh, I feel honored. Thank you. All right. We'll do it again. Everyone, we will get to you in the comments and all right, we'll do it again real soon. Have a good night, everyone. Goodbye. Yes. Good night. And